Hello, Merry Christmas and welcome to the last episode of Dern TV for this term and for this year. I'm Jaya Duggan. And I'm Alan Rett. Coming up in today's episode, we will hear from Miss Forrest about upcoming religious events and festivals. We can have a look at the latest students who have achieved their commendation awards. The gallery is back, allowing us to see the amazing artwork being produced by our students. Mr Richardson is going to talk to us about an upcoming sport and a brand new feature. And as ever, we will have the latest tables for our schoolhouse competition. But this week we'll be able to see how the top scoring tutor groups have performed. Christmas is almost upon us, but other religions also celebrate at this time of year. Over to Miss Forrest to tell us more. Hi everyone, so it's me again, just with some religious things that are coming up at the minute. So between the 10th and the 18th of December is the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah, where they light eight different candles on the menorah. What we're going to do now, we're going to watch a quick clip that'll teach you all about Hanukkah and how it's celebrated today. The Jewish story of Hanukkah. About 2,200 years ago, the Greeks marched into the Jewish people's promised land, where the Jewish people lived to take over the land and its people. One of the Greek kings was called Antiochus. Antiochus decided that all Jewish people should worship Greek gods. Jewish worship and reading the Torah, the Jewish holy book, was banned. After invading, Antiochus and his army attacked the temple in Jerusalem, which was a very important place for the Jewish people. They killed many people and stole lots of holy objects, including the sacred lamp, which had always burned brightly every day and every night. The sacred lamp went out, and the Greeks threw away all the special oil that was used to keep the lamp burning. The Jewish people were really upset and angry about this, and they didn't know what to do. But there was a brave family called the Maccabees, who decided to fight against King Antiochus. The name Maccabee means hammer. Judah Maccabee led his brothers in many battles against the mighty Greeks. They wanted their freedom to worship how they had always done. The Greeks had many more soldiers and even rode on elephants, but this didn't stop the Maccabees. Amazingly, they beat the Greek army and marched back into Jerusalem. They were the winners. They cleaned up the temple and put a new sacred lamp back on the altar. But when they tried to relight it, they realized the Greeks had thrown away all of the special oil that was needed to keep the flame burning. After searching high and low, they found one last small bottle of oil that the Greeks had not thrown away. But this would only keep the lamp burning for one day, and it would take eight days to make new oil. The brothers lit the sacred lamp with the last remaining bottle of oil. By a miracle, the lamp burned for eight days, and every day the flames grew brighter and brighter. Every year since then, Jewish people have celebrated their festival of lights, Hanukkah. They retell the story of the Maccabees, give gifts, eat special food and play games. And as they light the menorah each night, they celebrate God's glory and give thanks for the miracle in the temple long ago. On Thursday the 10th of December is Human Rights Day. Human Rights Day was created in 1948 after the Second World War um, and basically set out a set of rules and guidelines about what every human being should be allowed to do. Watch the quick clip and it'll tell you all about how, what they are and how they're um, fulfilled today. The idea of human rights is that each one of us, no matter who we are or where we are born, is entitled to the same basic rights and freedoms. Human rights are not privileges and they cannot be granted or revoked. They are inalienable and universal. That may sound straightforward enough, but it gets incredibly complicated as soon as anyone tries to put the idea into practice. What exactly are the basic human rights? Who gets to pick them? Who enforces them and how? The history behind the concept of human rights is a long one. Throughout the centuries and across societies, religions and cultures, we have struggled with defining notions of rightfulness, justice and rights. But one of the most modern affirmations of universal human rights emerged from the ruins of World War II with the creation of the United Nations. The treaty that established the UN gives as one of its purposes to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights. And with the same spirit, in 1948, the UN General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This document, written by an international committee chaired by Eleanor Roosevelt, lays the basis for modern international human rights law. The declaration is based on the principle that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. 
It lists 30 articles recognizing, among other things, the principle of non-discrimination and the right to life and liberty. It refers to negative freedoms, like the freedom from torture or slavery, as well as positive freedoms, such as the freedom of movement and residence. It encompasses basic civil and political rights, such as freedom of expression, religion, or peaceful assembly, as well as social, economic, and cultural rights, such as the right to education and the right to freely choose one's occupation and be paid and treated fairly. The Declaration takes no sides as to which rights are more important, insisting on their universality, indivisibility, and interdependence. And in the past decades, international human rights law has grown, deepening and expanding our understanding of what human rights are and how to better protect them. It's now time to celebrate the success of our learners across the school and see which students have earned their commendation awards. Next week we will be holding a raffle each day for students with over 25 commendations to win some amazing prizes. Keep your eyes and ears open to see if you're a winner. You could even walk away with a new pair of AirPods. Now it's time to hear from Mr Richardson as he brings us a sports roundup. Hello, I'm Mr Richardson and every week myself or a member of the P team is going to be giving you an update through Down TV on what has been happening in school in relation to PE and in particular fixtures against other schools. Now obviously at the minute we can't do that but there is still a whole world of sport happening at the minute so this weekend why not get involved by watching some sport on TV or hopefully with grassroots sports some of you will now be back and you'll be playing in your own teams which is brilliant. If you're not playing in your own team, then there are teams out there that you can try and get involved with, but there is elite sport on TV this weekend. There is a full Premier League round of fixtures, as well as the EFL Championship League 1, League 2. In the Premier League, there's some big games. We've got Liverpool travelling to Fulham, and on Saturday at half past five, we've got the Manchester Derby which will be a fantastic game if any of you can actually watch it. There's then some World Championship, World Class Golf happening this weekend as well. There's the Women's US Open and there is the DP World Tour Championship in Dubai, which brings the European Tour to a climax this weekend, which again will be superb. And finally, there's the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix for any of you that are into Formula One. So there's loads of sport that you can be getting involved with. And in January, we cannot wait to see you back at our clubs and hopefully we'll be able to have fixtures against other schools. Let's look at the section of artwork from our talented students in the gallery. It's now time to find out how things are progressing in our schoolhouse competition and see how the table will look as we prepare to finish for Christmas. Pegasus once again are in the top of the tree with 3,107 points. Phoenix are in second with 2,508 points. Titans are in third this week with 2,321 points. And Sphinx are in fourth place with 2,226 points. That means, unfortunately, Griffin are in fifth place this week with 1,181 points. We also want to show you how the top five individual tutor groups are performing for their house. In first place is 8DCG with 1,260 points. In second place we have 9RFR with 1,110 points. In third place we have 8KFY with 585 points. In fourth place we have 7EHL with 580. And finally in fifth we have 9VGS with 555. On Thursday during period three there will be a Christmas party for the top form in each year group to reward you for your achievements. We have 11 Year 10 students who have completed their Duke of Edinburgh Certificate of Achievement. This was completed during the pandemic and is the first and last time this award will probably be offered. Congratulations to all involved.
Well, that's all from us from this episode. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And a very Happy New Year. Thanks for watching Den TV. Until next year. Bye. Bye.